Welcome to a brand new edition of Retro Tech. Yeah, we're gonna bring you the best of the vintage multimeters out there for your vintage pleasure. Now, what a better way to start than with what is considered to be one of the first digital multimeters for the masses. I'm talking about nothing less than the Heathkit IM1202 digital multimeter, fabricated circa 1970. I have no idea what the price was when this came out because it was just a little thing, but um, I'm understanding it's around 50 to 80 dollars uh, US, so it wasn't uh, really considered cheap when you think about it back then. That was a heck of a lot of money. But um, that being said, you were basically on the forefront of multimeter technology if you had one of these bad boys on your bench. Spec wise, by today it looks pretty sad, but back then this was really cutting edge. It is a two and a half digit display consisting of two ZM1000 Nixie tubes and a uh, neon lamp that serves as a leading number one. Uh, also, you have three other neon lamps as an overrange plus minus indicators. Boy, look at the knobs on this. These are big, bold. It takes a little bit to move them, but uh, they get there with authority, no doubt. Input wise, we have that uh, voltage and our commoner ground, and there is the milliamp slash resistance at the top. Current range is very small, uh, up to two milliamps. So really we're not talking a whole lot in the current department. We also have that plus minus indicator on the left, but really that was it. So not lots going on. But back then, don't forget, this was really state of the art. And there we are in all its Heathkit glory, the Heath Company, Benton Harbor, Michigan, model IM1202. It's powered by mains only, no batteries here. 120 volts is what it takes to get this guy going. Uh, two fuses as well. Uh, we have a quarter amp, as they called it back then, and a three amp, both three AGs. Here I have a standard nine volt battery. Look at that, 8.9 volts coming up with the Heath kit 50 years later, and it is still able to read a nine volt battery. Oh, -ho, there is a God. And if you look at those Nixie tubes, I'm telling you, those are something just wild. If you don't have a Nixie tube uh, instrument on your bench, you got to get one. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, it's really incredible how they utilized this technology back then. But, um, you know, they did. Once again, these are the ZM1000 Nixies in there. Uh, a lot of these ship with broken Nixies, but fear not, they're fairly common. And you can find, I believe it's Philips that have replacements that fit uh, the IM1202, no problem. Okay, we're gonna try AC volts as well. We've got an AC volts mode. We're gonna go up to 200 here. And I've got some old WaveTech probes because I do not have the probes that this Heath gets shipped with originally. And let's just see what we get. And look at that, there we are, AC volts. Um, Hundred eleven volts AC. Now it's not true or mess, but obviously it is a little bit off. But that's okay. You know, almost fifty years old. We can give it some slack. Now the good thing is this has a ton of calibration options. So if you're so enthused, you can actually open the sucker up and calibrate everything. I mean everything. I'll show you what I mean. So yeah, boy, I wasn't kidding. Look at that AC calibration here. AC calibration adjust. We have our resistance a calibration, the two mega ohm, 200K, 20K, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, more adjustments here for the resistance range, a DC volts, you name it, it is all here. The entire multimeter was user calibrated. And look at that, that's the inside. And there's that ZM1000 Nixie tube we were talking about glowing, that beautiful glow 50 years later. Oh, Tell you, it just brings a warm feeling all over it's me. Not a big multimeter, but they managed to fit a lot of components into this space. Now, all of the logic circuitry is TTL or transistor to tr transistor logic. Um, the range from zero to 200 and uh, the maximum error, I believe back then they were looking at um, a few counts plus 1%. Um, so, you know, once again, uh, considering the time, the year, uh, this was considered cutting edge precision. Well, pretty close to it. Basically, they're converting uh, AC into DC for the AC ranges. And uh, there's a constant current source for uh, all of the resistance ranges as well. Um, not bad technology considering what we're looking at. Uh, don't forget, once again, multimeters were not common at the day. No, we were still using those big honking analog meters for the most part. This was definitely something new. This Heath kit also had a handle, which was slightly uncommon back in the day. So I guess this was considered portability uh, 45, 50 years ago. If you had one of these on your benches back in the early 70s, you were definitely considered cutting edge. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this 
first ever retro tech review of the Heathkit IM1202. Now back to regular programming. 